morning to each and every one of you. First of all, we want to thank you guys so much for tuning in for our live at 10 a.m. service here at MMCC Wilson. Listen, you guys, this is an exciting day for us here. We are celebrating our fifth pastoral anniversary. MMCC Wilson, make some noise. We have been awaiting this moment all year long, and we are excited. Y'all, it's here. It is here. It's here. So 10 a.m. this morning, we're here right now celebrating, and also back at 5 p.m. today, we'll be celebrating as well. So we are excited. So we want you guys to go right ahead and share this video. Registration has been sent out. Registration has been closed. So we understand y'all can't be here. But please, please share this live with someone. Matter of fact, tag somebody. Invite somebody. If you are a visitor, let us know where you're watching from, who invited you. So continue to share this. Listen, I know you guys wish you could be here. I wish you could be here. But still, you guys still can church with us. So comment, all right? A lot of likes, hearts comments, okay? Comment as if you are here, all right? So what we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to go into our intercessory prayer, and we want you guys to continue to share this live, engage with us. Thank you guys once again for joining with us, and before we go into praise and worship, now we'll go into intercession. So Father, it is today that we open, hallelujah, hallelujah, that we open up, hallelujah, that we open up our mouth to give you, hallelujah, to give you glory, hallelujah, to give you glory, honor, and praise. For Father, you alone are worthy. Father, we thank you now, for this is the day that you have made. So Father, no matter what our circumstance or our situation, we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. So Father, before we ask for anything, God, we join together to open up our mouths, Father, to put our hands together, to open up our mouths and declare that you are holy. Hallelujah. Father, you are righteous. Father, there is nobody beside you. God, you you are God and God all by yourself. Father, you are amazing. Father, you are perfect. Father, you are magnificent. Father, you are intelligent. There is nobody like you nowhere. It's the name of Jesus that we call on today. The name of Jesus that we love. Come on, Zion. I need you praying. Father, we thank you now that we can call upon your name and be sure that you are here and attend to our every need. Father, we thank you now that you have protected us. Father, we thank you now that you have been our provider. Father, sometimes we can take things lightly, that we have food to eat, that we have clothes to wear, that we have a job to go to, that we have a house to live in, that we have freedom to worship. But Father, we stop right now, God, to think about those things that you have allowed us to do. We thank you now for those things, Father, that you have given us. We thank you now for those things, Father, that you did not let happen to us. So Father, we we take this time now, God, to celebrate you, Father, to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary and bless the name of Jesus. Father, we call on your name right now, the name of Jesus, the perfect name of Jesus, the strong name of Jesus. For the name of the Lord, it is a strong tower. The righteous can run in and we can find safety. The righteous can run in and we can find comfort. The righteous run in and we can find joy. The righteous run in and we can find our peace. Father, we thank you now that God, we don't serve a dead God. But we thank you now that the God that we serve, he is alive and well. He's moving.
moving in our midst. He's still answering prayers. He's still healing diseases. He's still delivering minds. He's still mending a broken heart. He's still setting spirits free. So, Father, we thank you now that we serve the risen Savior. We thank you now that we serve the risen Savior. We thank you now for your sacrifice that was on Calvary. God, we never take that for granted. But God, we thank you today that God, we're saved. We thank you now that we're in our right minds. We thank you now that we have a desire to serve you. We thank you now that, Father, we know who you are. And most of all, we thank you that you know who we are. So, Father, hallelujah. So, Father, it is now that in the sanctuary we lift up holy hands. It is now, God, that we call upon your name, Father. God, we're asking you today, Father, to forgive us, Father. God, for those things that we know not, forgive us, Father, for those thoughts and those desires, those motives that did not line up with your will. Father, forgive us now. God, cleanse our minds. Cleanse our hearts, Father. God, we present our bodies to you as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto you father which is our reasonable service so father it is now that we ask you it is now that we invite your presence father destroy yokes today break every chain today loosen the chains of injustice today god set the captive free mend every broken heart god heal diseases in the name of jesus miracles signs and wonders today Miracle signs and wonders today. I understand that we're honoring our leader, but Father, that does not negate the fact that this day is set aside for us to honor you. So Father, we move our agendas out the way. We move our motives out the way. We move our desires out the way. That you may come in, Father, and do what you want to do. That you may come in, Father, and say what you want to say. Let your glory be revealed. Let your glory be revealed. Let your glory be revealed. Shift your weight around, Father. Breathe on us now. Blow on us now. Open us now. Save us now. Lead us now. Consume us now. Consume us now. The fire from heaven. Consume everything. Burn everything that's not like you. Burn up every affliction. Burn up instability in our emotions now. Burn up instability in our finances. In the name of Jesus. Father, we're pulling on you now. We're calling on you now. For there is power in your name. There is power in your name. I dare somebody right now to begin to open up your mouth. And begin to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. We call on you, Jesus. I dare somebody right now to wrap back your head and open up your mouth and begin to call his name. Come see about your people now. Come see about your people now. Father, we're calling on you. We have things up before you. But God, you said in your word, huh? Before you call upon me, I will answer you. Before you pray unto me, I have angels who are waiting for you, who are waiting to fight your battle. So, Father, it is now that we call on your name. It is now, Father, that we pull on strength. Send strength, God, out of the sanctuary. Send strength, Father, out of dying. And, Father, we'll be careful. Give your name praise. We'll be careful to give your name glory. And it's in Jesus' name. Zion, right here, open up your mouth and begin to release a shout in this house. Do it! Hallelujah! We acknowledge your presence! 
God. Hallelujah. We acknowledge your spirit in this sanctuary. We don't take it lightly that we can feel the move when we come in your sanctuary. We don't take it lightly that we can feel your presence when we come in the sanctuary. We don't have to press in front. We can instantly tap into your presence. We can instantly tap into your glory. We can instantly tap into your power. We can instantly tap into your glory. Tap into the glory. Tap into the glory. watching the pastor of this church on a live and he was testifying about something that not only he was going through but I know a lot of us have gone through and normally when I come to a service and I'm the praise and worship leader sometimes we get a little programmed and we know okay I gotta do a fast song I gotta do a slow song because I got to do the fast song so that they can get to where we're gonna go and then I can slow them down but the Holy Ghost convicted me. And as he said, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. You have to be secure enough in the power that is within you, that comes from him, that you can instantly tap into the presence. And I had to think about where I was coming. And I'm not saying this just to boost y'all up. I really believe that the spirit of the Lord is here. Yeah. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? And fullness of what? And so I believe that as leaders in here, we should be setting the atmosphere for the leader. Yes, yes. And when I heard this song for the first time that just came out, I said, this is the one. How many believe that you're alive just because there's more? Yes. There's more plans that he has for you. There's more life to live. I said there's more life to live. Come on, I dare somebody to look at your neighbor and say, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Do you know that he looks after his word to see that it accomplishes that what he sends it out to do? So he said, I formed you in your mother's womb. So I knew then that there was more. I don't care if you've been suicidal, what you've been faced against. If there's breath in your body in this moment, give them glory. Come on, some of us have even attempted it and it failed. He's the God that never fails. My attempt failed, but he's the God that never fails. When I took the pills, it, it was an attempt and it failed, but he never failed me. Come on, I don't know your testimony, but I know that you're alive because there's more. Hallelujah. God knows the plans he has for me. He knows the thoughts he thinks towards me. And this is not an accident. You're alive because there's more you're alive because there's more God knows the plan he has for you he knows the thoughts he thinks towards you I'm going to make it personal. I'm alive because there's more. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive because there's more. Because 
confess more God knows the plans He has for you He knows the thoughts He thinks for you I know the plan He has for you He knows the thoughts According to his word Come on, 
let me hear you. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Because there's more. Come on, no music. I'm alive. Come on, declare it in this room. Make the enemy look like a fool. Come on, you thought you threw your best shot. But it was no match to the Savior. He's a lifter of your head, yeah, yeah. He's a keeper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, with the music. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. There is more that I require of thee. There is more that I require of thee. There is more that I require of thee hallelujah there is more that I require of thee this is his instruction this is what he's saying there is more that I require of thee so God are you saying that I'm still usable there is more that I require of thee. So God, just saying that I'm still capable. There is more that I require of thee. No, but God, I messed up over and over again. I messed up over and over again. There is more that I require of thee. I didn't learn when I made the mistake the first time. I didn't learn when I made the mistake the second time. There is more that I require of thee. I don't have the title. I, that's somebody else's job. There is more that I require of thee. But they know about what I used to do. They know my, they, they know my story. There is more that I require of thee. Can you please use somebody else? I'm not worthy. Can you please take this cup from me? There is more that I There is more that I require of thee. After I finished fussing with him about it and saying, this isn't for me, I said, yes. I don't even know what I'm saying yes to, but yes. God, I'll just trust you. Yes. You never led me astray. Yes. Can I just talk to you today? My answer is yes. Come on, I don't know what your will is. I don't know what your way is, but I trust you. Yes. Yes. that up in surrenderance we say yeah. well, this is my sign of surrenderance to you yeah. come on even when I wanted to say no I'll say yes come on yes to the assignment yes to your plan yes to your way yeah. oh. I said yes to everybody else so I might as well say yes to you You did it. Come on, I did somebody to some man to the father and say, yeah. yeah. Come on, yeah. I want all of the front everybody to be able to sing it. Everybody promotes it! 
Pastor, this is for you today. There is more that he requires of you. That's why he didn't let you give up. That's why the attempt failed. There is more that he requires of you. today that are going to renew their yes not just to God but to your leader I said is there anybody in the room that's going to renew their yes not just to God but for your leader come on tell him yes come on tell him yes yeah 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 y
will That's your way I will trust you I said I I will trust you You will be done You will be done Upon my expectations Upon my plans Upon what I have plotted out You will You will That's what I want For my life On. If you told God yes, come on, a praise goes right here. If you told God yes lately, a praise goes right here. I don't know about you, but there was a time in my life where I did not have a yes for God. But it's now here that I'm saying that all I have is a yes. Anybody got a yes to the master? If that's true, I want you to open up your mouth and give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. We say yes to you. Say yes, say yes. Wow, glory to God. It's yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I may not see my way out, but it's yes, Lord. My strength may be fading, but it's yes, Lord. I may not see how to come together, but it's yes, Lord. My mind not, might not be at ease, but it's yes, Lord. My body might be rocking with pain, but it's yes, Lord. My bills may be coming in more than the money is, but it's yes, Lord. Somebody shout yeah! Somebody shout yeah! Yeah! I shut the mother. Got a yes down in my toes. Yes, I'll go all the way. Yes, I'll stay in the race. Yes, I'll trust you. Yes, I'll trust you. Yes, my hope is in you. Yes, no wait on you. Yes, no wait on you. Yes, no wait on you. It's a yes in my spirit. And not only yes will I trust you. Not only yes will I wait on you, but in the midst of my waiting, yes, I'll praise you. Yes, I'll magnify you. Yes, I'll magnify you. For the Bible says in everything, give thanks unto him. For this is the will of God concerning each and every one of you. If you have a yes to your spirit, one more time, open up your mouth and give him praise. Praise. Hey, we thank God. Hallelujah. There is a yes in our spirit. Hallelujah. And we thank God. We thank God. Thank you. Yes, God. There's a yes in my answer. It will be yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you 30 seconds right here to give God a yes, Lord. Praise. So whatever that means to you, whatever that looks like to you, when I count to three, I want you to begin to give God a yes, Lord. Praise. One, two, three. Three, come on, give it to him. Yes, I trust you. Because I understand it. No matter how rough it may be. No matter how tough it may be. I understand that in all these things. I said in all these things. We are more than conquerors. Hey, shot. I have the victory every single time. Anybody victorious in here? No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter how it seems, one thing I understand is that the word says, thanks be unto God, who always gives us the victory and causes us to triumph. And we thank God for the victory. Hallelujah. We thank God for the victory today. Hallelujah. We do. Hallelujah. We thank God for victory. We thank God for the renewed, yes, and the hallelujah in our spirit. Father, we thank you now. Come on, can we begin to open our mouth and salute the presence of Christ? We honor the presence of Christ. We're grateful to be here. 
Once again, we honor the presence and the spirit of Christ. Come on. He deserves a louder applause than that. Thank you. We thank God for the presence of God. We want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining with us. MMCC Wilson, this is an exciting day for us. Our pastor is celebrating five years of pastoring. And we want to honor him today. We want to honor him today, Pastor Sherman Blandon. God bless you. And to our first lady who's been right by his side the whole time, First Lady Alicia Blant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just had a flashback. Sorry. I thank God to last year. My bad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That song was right on time. That Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. But the fact that we're still celebrating our pastor standing here, that's enough to get God praise right there. We got a dance on the floor back there. We got a dance on the floor back there. I'm going to give you some time to let your mind go back there and think back on the time. Are you still the enemy to the breaking the world? But because you're standing here today, I know we're celebrating our pastor today, but truth be told, if we can be honest, April, there was a time in our life where the enemy tried to take us out. There was a time in our life where we thought it to give up the, th the towel, to throw in the towel, to call it quits. I don't know about you, but I've contemplated suicide plenty of times. But because there was more, there was more that God was requiring of us. We're still standing here today. So when I talk to Chris, I want you to think of a time in your life where you knew you wanted to throw in the towel. You know you wanted to give up. But because God did not let you give up, you're standing here today. I want you to praise God according to what that means to you. Y'all ready? One, two, one, two, three. Come on, give it to us.
We gotta move. I promise you'll have time to dance later. But we gotta move. We gotta move. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Can I go sit down? 30 more seconds. One, two, one, two, three. Get it out, get it out. God praise right here all over this sanctuary. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. While you're still putting those hands together and while you're still excited, it is time to give in the house of God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I am excited about giving. I'm ex Hallelujah. I'm ex glory. I'm excited about giving. We're going to do this just a tad bit differently today. Glory. Shoo, thank you. If it's your son, hallelujah. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. If it's your Sunday to tithe, MMCC Wilson, you guys already know how we do. I want you guys to listen carefully. We're going to get a hallelujah. We get our tithes in first. We'll move to the next segment, then we'll move on. But we have a new cash app. So I want you guys to write this down. And if you are watching with us, once again, thank you guys for joining us. The cash app will come across the bottom of the screen. Pay close attention, it's not, it is not the same cash app. Okay, if I'm correct, it is dollar sign Wilson, M-M-C-C. Okay, dollar sign Wilson, M-M-C-C. If it is your Sunday to tithe, we're gonna ask all the leaders, you guys know how we do. If it's your Sunday to tithe, please come around, stand in the front here. If it is your Sunday to tithe, tithe this, tithe this, tithe this. And just a disclaimer out there for the next part of this offering, we also have the square, the cash square. Uh, Minister Dakota has one. Um, she's waving her hand. So if you want to give through that way, of course, if you want to give through cash, we do have the buckets. You guys can drop those off in those buckets. And of course, I'll reiterate again, the cash app is dollar sign Wilson, M-M-C-C. -C. All right, with our tithe, thank God we thank you, Father, for allowing us to have a job and income to tithe with. We thank you, Father, for trusting in your word that, Father, if we do our part, you'll take care of everything we need. And not only that, you'll go a step further and grant us every desire of our heart. So, God, it is now that we trust you with this seed. Father, it is now that we trust that you will multiply every seed that is sown. Father, the harvest will follow us. It shall follow us for the rest of our life. So, Father, it is now that we rejoice, bringing our tithe in unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, of course, y'all know it's our pastor's fifth anniversary. And so we are grateful. I'm extremely grateful um, to, to take part in this segment to where we have a chance to honor our pastor, to honor our great leader. I'm not going to be up here long gonna cut to it but I was watching an anniversary a few a few months ago actually and the pastor um, his former pastor it was pretty much a memory for him he began to break down in tears things that he wished he could say to him things he wished he could do for him he could no longer do his pastor was no longer with him but I am just grateful that we have the opportunity while he is alive to pour back into our pastor we cannot measure up for all the stress the heartache all it takes to pour into members because truth be told pastoring is not easy pastoring is not easy it takes a lot so we thank him during this pandemic especially he has not missed a beat he has not missed a beat so we want to take time right now to pour back into him um, it's not the end of it we'll come back tonight at 5 p.m. but leaders we already know what we have been assessed to do um, for those who are members if you have uh, your special offering that you're sowing today, we're going to ask that you would utilize those three ways of giving. If you can give through our cash app, which is dollar sign, Wilson MMCC, or you can do cash square in the back, Minister Coe's in the back, or our offering receptacle is over here with Deacon Rico. 
So if that's you, we're going to ask that you guys go ahead and stand and bring your offerings at this time. Bring your offerings at this time. Some of you guys have been paying through the week, and we have seen it, and we appreciate that. We appreciate that. So, Father, we thank you now that we have the opportunity to give. We thank you for all those who have sold out of abundance and, God, those who have sold out of sacrifice. We pray that, God, that this will not fall onto bad ground. But we thank you now that our seeds are being sown into good ground. And in due time, we shall reap the harvest. So, Father, we pray that right now you would anoint this seed, anoint these offerings. Father, let it do and accomplish everything that it needs, wants, and desires to do. And, Father, I pray now for your people that they shall not go and lack another day of their life. But you will supply every need according to the riches that you have in glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen. All right, it is now time to hear the word of God. It is time to hear the word of God. So I'm getting ready to relinquish my stand. We have the, uh, the opportunity. We are afforded this opportunity, this great privilege and honor to hear from our own pastor, Pastor Sherman Blandon. So let's make some noise for him as he comes. Amen. Can we just... Uh, one more time, give Jesus a big praise all over this place. Come on, we could do a whole lot better than that. Give Jesus a big praise. Bless his holy and righteous name. Just look at somebody. I know we can't hug and all that stuff, but just look at somebody. Nod at them. Tell them it's good to see you. Go ahead, smile under your mask. Look funny. It's all right. Smile under your mask. And uh, you could be seated. We're certainly thankful uh, that the Lord has brought us to this wonderful uh, Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and uh, I'm excited to be celebrating and pastoring for five years. Somebody shout five years. An awesome occasion. Can you guys do me a favor? Y'all know our uh, preliminaries. MMCC, let's make some noise for all of our visitors sharing with us. We appreciate every visitor. Those watching online are certainly thankful and grateful. Can we make some noise for Annalisa Jacobs? She, like she can, she can sing, <laughs> not sing, sang, like flat out. And uh, I, I enjoy, I enjoy all of it, right? I enjoy the high pitch, the runs. But can I tell y'all what I enjoy the most is two things. Her humility, she is down to earth. She is not grand or great, like she is humble. And the second thing that I really enjoy is she is anointed. Some people are skilled to sing, but look, look she is anointed to sing. Let's make some noise for her one more time, amen. It's all the way from South Carolina, and uh, I don't know where she was last night. She was somewhere doing something with somebody being great. And uh, but we're thankful that she consented to be here with us this morning. Can y'all make some noise for Lady Alicia? Ben. I'm telling y'all, I, I couldn't have I couldn't have done this uh, without her, and uh, she made it she made it extremely possible. And I'm so grateful. And uh, my kids, I don't know where they at. They're somewhere around. Uh, I don't do this much, but can y'all appreciate my children? They didn't ask for this. Uh, they're sharing. And uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't ask. They didn't ask for this, but I am uh, grateful for them. Uh, I'm going to preach, but before I preach, I have a wonderful friend uh, who is here today, and uh, he's very, very busy, but he made time for me. Your pastor made time for us. And uh, I want us to stand all over our feet, stand all over our feet, stand all over the building. Well, you could stand on your hands, okay, so I said stand on your feet. But I want us to appreciate history because a lot of times uh, 
we, we don't really appreciate our own. Uh, but history is standing right here. Out of the hundreds of years that this city has been established, there's never been a black mayor. And the Lord saw fit to bless us. Listen, I want y'all to hear me. Not with just a black mayor, but a competent mayor. Who knows his stuff, who loves people, who appreciates people. I'm going to ask my good friend, the Honorable Mayor of the City of Wilson, to come and give us words. Let's make some noise for Mayor Carlton Stevens. Wow. You, you can be seated. <laughs> well, I feel like I need to preach, Pastor. <laughs> I got my iPad up here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm first, I want to give honor to my Lord and Savior for allow me the opportunity to be here. I want to, <laughs> I want to give honor to the angel of the house yeah. and, and to the other angel. Yeah. I just want to say, um, you all, I, I don't even know where to begin when I start talking about Pastor Sherman. I, I remember when he first came, and I have a lot of young people that work with me, and they say, hey, there's a new church on 301. And I said, well, who, who's doing that? And then they were trying to tell me, and I I didn't know who this dude was, right? And um, they say he's like 18 years old. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I said, okay, well, you know, things started progressing. And I, during the campaign, uh, I said, you know, I have to get over to that church. And I, I didn't make it. But during uh, the first phase of this pandemic, I called him. I said, listen, I really need you to pray for our city. Would you be willing to? Without hesitation, he said, I'll be ready. I will be ready. And the way he said it, I felt his heart. So when we got here, I walked in the back with the crew from, uh, with the staff from the communications uh, department, and he had orange juice and, and cookies and little bites set up. I said, now he about to be my BFL, because <laughs> I already know that he know I like to eat. And we came in, but then that was my first real conversation. And I'm going to tell you, this brother is so genuine. He is so genuine. He is so wise beyond his years. And I enjoyed just talking with him. And then we prayed, he prayed with us. But we formed a friendship. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. In the position that I hold, I have what you call four-year friends. Because after the first four years, if you get a note for years, they'll be your friend then. But if not, you don't see them anymore. That's a lifetime friend. That's a lifetime friend. You know, now, when he sent me the invitation, the first thing I wanted to say was, no, I'm not coming, because I knew he was going to try to outdress me. <laughs> and that's been, that's been a little problem with our relationship thus far. But I just want to say, Pastor, man, genuinely, I love you. I love you to the bottom of my heart, and I realize this is your fifth year, and I truly believe that numbers mean a lot. And I know that number five is grace. You're walking in grace. And God's grace is going to be with you all the way through. You just keep doing what you're doing, man, and just keep professing the name of God. Keep showing everybody that you are a man of God, and we're going to follow you. We're going to be right there with you. I love you, and thank you for this opportunity. Let's give him one more big hand. Come on. Now, we stand for Obama. Let's stand for Carlton Steve, Mayor Stevens, and praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. It means a lot. You can be seated. Let's go to Revelation. Book of Revelation. Chapter 12. Book of Revelation, chapter 12. And uh, I'm just, again, I'm just elated. And this is, this is, this is a day right here, y'all. And uh, I am, I'm elated. And I, I know she's going to get a little, um, blush she gonna blush a little bit but it's good to see mama rico isn't it look at her she trying to hide already <laughs> oh man uh revelation chapter 12 and uh verse 11 um let's see let's go to the uh king james version here um i i wanted to i wanted to preach today um and, and not because I didn't have any other friends. The Lord has blessed me to have some great pastoral friends and just evangelists that could come. Uh, but I wanted to do this myself today. 
uh, for a particular reason. Um, and it's found here in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And it reads like this. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Let's go to verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye, verse 12, excuse me. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Here's why. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. He has a short time. Let's go back up to verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. I want to speak from this subject. I want you to just look at somebody and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say with a little more power. Neighbor, neighbor. let me testify. Let me testify. Um, growing up in church, and uh, if you grew up in the type of church I've been in, and uh, I know Miss Tanya would identify with this, you would have uh, what they call sometimes praise the Lord service, or weeknight service. And in those weeknight services, Friday night services, Sunday night services, there was a portion of that service called testimony service or either devotional service, where people would get up and sing songs and they would jump up like popcorn. And that's when you learn how to be a real musician because one person would sing in C, the other sing in Z, and the other sing, and you would just learn uh, how, how things work. But there were also times where a person would stand up and give their testimony and they would start out with these words, giving honor to God. Yeah. <laughs> it was ahead of my life. Honor to the pastor, first lady, deacons, saints, and friends, all of those in what? Their respective places. And they would begin to, they would begin to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Uh, some would uh, begin to talk about minute things such as he, you know, uh, uh, spared me and kept me and touched me with his finger of love and shined his spotlight and then others would give a more dramatic testimony such as he healed my body from cancer and, and things like that but they understood the power of the testimony because there were many times people would come to church dealing with the situation silently but to hear someone stand up and say this is what the Lord has done for me it would help someone in their silent troubles but as we have progressed in society, as we progressed in church, we've gotten away from testimony service. We don't tend to testify about what the Lord has done for us. He gives us victory after victory, but we keep it private. But I want to know if there's anybody in here today that said the Lord has won some battles for me. And I am not, hear me, I want you to understand, I am not ashamed to let the world know it was not my education. It was not my smarts, it was not my money, it was not my credit, but everything that I have was because of the grace of God. Look at somebody and say, please let me testify. We understand that throughout the course of the word of God, testimony and testifying is actually encouraged. In Psalm 22, verse 22, it says, I will praise you to all my brothers. I will stand up before the congregation and testify of the wonderful things that you have done. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 8 says, Therefore never be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me. This is Paul saying, Instead, by God's power, join me in, sake, in suffering for the sake of the gospel. Daniel chapter 4 verse 2 says, I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High has performed for me. The, the, the word of God is full of us, uh, full of encouraging words telling us to testify about the works of the Lord. Now, we've switched it up. We're too busy talking about what the devil is doing. 
We're too busy talking about how the devil is fighting us, how the devil is beating us up. We're too busy talking about how people are trying to fight us on the job. We're too busy talking about how things are going wrong in our body. And we are not lifting up the name of Jesus. The, the, the psalm writer says, oh, what magnify the Lord with me. Here's the thing about magnifying something. You do not actually change the size of the object. You just change the image of it. I want you to hear me because we can't change the grandness in the size of God's name. But in any situation when God's name seems small, what we can do is magnify it. Such as you go to a doctor and have a bad doctor's report. Isaiah said, whose report will you believe? By his stripes, I'm already healed. I know for some shouters what the doctor said. But for some shouters, I also know what God said. I want you to hear me. I know what scientists say, but I also know what God said. I know what the credit report says, but I also know what God says. Let me take some time to tell you how good God has been to me. Uh, in 2015, we opened this ministry. We took time and uh, obeyed the word of the Lord when he said, I want you to start the church. And we started the church, and it was at a position and a time in my life, Mayor, where, where, where it was probably the worst time I could have ever started a church. If he would have told me the year before or two years before 2015, I would have been fine with it, quit, because I had the money, right? I had everything. But in 2015, it seemed as if I had lost everything. But I had a word that says, start the church. So 2015 to 2000. 2016 we started the ministry we had less money we didn't have any money at times it was hard financially we had to endure many rumors of, 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 of people spreading lies and gossip about us not paying bills and about us being evicted and about lights being cut off we had to endure many days in a church with no air condition we had to endure many days in a church that did not have electricity I had to think around some Sometimes having to go rent a generator so that we can have power in the church. It, it, look at somebody say, that was a rough year. It, it, it was a year, I have to be honest with you, where I did not think I was called to pastor. I was a great evangelist, meaning I didn't have to be over people. I would just preach and leave. But when it came to pastoring, I, I began to suffer from, some of you might have heard of this, an imposter syndrome. Meaning I did not think I belonged in the seat of a pastor. How, how could it be? I had big hopes, big dreams, big aspirations, wanted to help people, but I couldn't even pay our own church bill. It was tough. We went from month to month. But can I testify to you? God always provided. Hear me. When, when we didn't know how we were going to make rent, uh, God always sent somebody in to send a big seed. When we didn't know how we were going to pay the light bill, it was people like Pastor Damien Royal who came in, wrote a big check and said, because I believe in you, keep going. It, it was people like Latoya Bruinton who came in and preached and said, I don't want anything. I'm going to help you raise money. It was people like Carl Jones who came in and said, even though it's hot, I'm going to preach like there's an air condition because I believe in what God put in you ah uh, then 2016 to 2017 we had to move out of that building because it was not financially smart I had a word but I also had common sense hear me I, I, I had faith but I also knew that there are some things that require common sense because hear me there are some times where you can do the king's work without the king's approval and I want you to hear me. Just because you think you're preaching, teaching, and doing this, that does not mean God called you to it. And I have to be honest, Karina, God did not call me to that building. My aspirations called me to that building. What I thought church should be called me to that building. We went over to a school, a middle school by the name of Darden. It was in that moment where my second son was born. My youngest son, Joey, and, and my right hand, my singer, my praise and worship leader, was not there during that time because she was with, with my son Joey. It was during that time where I did not think people were going to come to the church. It was during that time where I thought people were going to think I was a failure.
here because we left a building to have church in a school. Who goes to church in a school? Couldn't have weeknight services. Had to wait on a janitor to come and open up. Had to wait on a janitor to come and lock up. But it was God that allowed people to hear the word of God and join in a temporary location. I, I, I begin to have my mind that the enemy begin to play with my mind a little bit ain't nobody gonna come over here who wants to come to a young leader in a school you're not stable it was people like Mrs. like Mrs. Sutton who joined the ministry around that time it was people like Raisha and Courtney who joined the ministry at that time it was people like Shalia and, and Dakota who kept the ministry afloat and I begin to get encouraged and God brought us through again it was at that moment where I'm testifying y'all it was at that moment where I did not ever think we were going to get a building why because finances didn't match up but it was at that moment I was driving on 301 got a call and I stopped down there at the gas station and, and, and in on that call they said hey man there's a building and it has Trinity Fellowship on the top of it and, and, I, and they said I think it's empty I came back around here did not see a for rent sign for lease for sale nothing tried to look in didn't see anything and as I was getting ready to get in my car a big black Ford F-150 pulled up and a Caucasian man by the name of Bill Andrews got out the truck hear me and he said are you looking for a building I said well yes sir he said what for I said a church he opened the door we walked in I said this is a wonderful space white walls it was dingy dirty all over the place went into the back Cook, uh, cookie monster Elmo Jesus and David and Goliath was in the back and, and, and I said this is a good space for us and, and, he's, and, and I said well how much is it because my fear began to speak louder than my faith I said how much is it he told me I said no we can't afford that he said fine took the key off of his key ring put it in my hand walked out and in my hand I just told the man we could not afford it and he he walked off I called my leader I said apostle uh, we, 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 we got eyes on this building apostle came down with Bishop Mike from South Africa Bishop Mike and apostle we stood right there big Courtney where you are uh, Mama Rico where you are we stood right there in the midst of an open building and we prayed with little Shannon we pray with first lady Michelle and he said if you want it it belongs to you well the owner came back I said well we want it but we can't afford it he said this is what I'm gonna tell you to do go sign the paperwork and don't worry about the money get it in when you get it in uh, look at somebody say please let me testify I could sit here and talk to you about how the devil pushed me about how the devil tried to attack me about how the devil tried to mess me up but I would rather talk to you about how God opened door at the door at the door at the door I need somebody in here that know God has opened doors for you to open up your mouth and just shout right here Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not done testifying yet. After we begin to do the work in the church, after we begin to do work in the ministry, the Lord began to bless, send families, and, 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 and the Lord began to multiply. And I got to be honest with you, 2017 slash 18, it was tough because that was the year when finances began to go down again. That was the year when loyalties began to be attacked. That was the year, Mayor Stevenson, that I had to learn that just because they start with you don't mean they'll finish with you. Oh, can I say that one more time? Just because they start with you don't mean they'll finish with you. And for some mature folk, just because they start with you and don't finish with you don't mean they're enemies. I would be an irresponsible man. I would be an irresponsible person if I sat here and said everybody who left the church was the devil. That's witchcraft. Everybody who didn't leave want the devil. But can I be honest? Some were, but not everybody. I got to thank God for those who helped me get to where we are and had to go to where they are. Y'all understand what I'm talking about. 2017, 18, most of you don't know, was the year that my nice Lexus got repossessed. No, 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 not taken away. I didn't send it back. It got repossessed. Why did it get repossessed? Because that was the year where I took my money and put it towards 
this church. And I thought, I got to be honest, I thought, well, if I make this faith move, you know, everything's going to be all right. No, it won't. My car got repossessed, went outside, came and got it like a thief in the night. I said, this ain't the, this, this. oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. It was the year that my car got repossessed. And then I had to come preach to y'all about faith while y'all driving away in cars. I had to rent a car for an entire year. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. What, but why? Because I was funding the ministry by myself. People were given, but it was not enough. I, I rented a car for an entire year. I rented the car so much, Brandon, that the people at Enterprise knew our names. They knew exactly what we wanted. And, and, and listen, y'all, I got to be honest with you. I rented the car so much that they stopped giving me the economy car, and they started giving me the upgrade, all right? They, 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 they knew me that much. But, but listen, can I also tell you that was also the year that the Lord provided for me oh that was also the year that I got the car that I wanted y'all not talking to me in here look at somebody say God still works well, that was also the year uh, where I lost my speech. That was the year of not being able to speak. That was the month uh, where, 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 where I, the enemy attacked my body. 30-something years old. I'm young. I'm healthy. I don't have issues. Don't take medicine. But the enemy attacked my body. Oh, but can I tell you, just like he attacked my body, that was also the year God healed my body. That was the year, can I tell you, that I became a miracle i had never knew god to be a healer but that year god i feel like running was the year that i knew him to be a healer i'm testifying because there's somebody in here with some pain in your body that doctors cannot identify but i got a word for you that if he did it for me not somebody say he can do it for you too Oh, that was the year 2018 19 was a year that my loyalty was attacked I, uh, that was the year where I learned I could not rejoice with demons uh, I was rejoicing with things I should have been rebuking that's a word for your own life right there uh, I was rejoicing I had to rebuke some things and cast some things out that was the year I had to open up the door to some expired things uh, that was the year where I learned expired stuff made you sick if you didn't throw it out y'all don't want to talk to me in here that was the year where God did not add that was the year God subtracted but cannot tell you something that was the year that God has done more than he's ever done Oh, he told David, he said, David, you got a lot of men with you, but some of these men ain't going to be able to cut it. Every time David stopped, he drew back some men. And David went from thousands of men to only a few hundreds of men. But let me tell you something. David was able to do more with those few hundred than he was able ever to do with those thousands. And I need to tell you something. You're saying, Pastor, I got a pay cut on my job. Pastor, I'm not making as much as I used to. Pastor, I'm losing friends. Pastor, I'm losing stuff. But can I tell you something? Can I testify to you? that this November is going to be the month where God does more with less oh God uh, let me get to 2019 20, 2019, 2020 uh, it was a year, oh God it was a mental year for me it was, it was a year that I quit it was a year that I was dead but I was still alive it was a year that I was just existing 2019 was the year I lost it mentally the enemy had finally got to me he had been fighting me for five years I had been fighting him off I had been dancing, shouting, preaching, jumping but 2019 was the year that I got weak it was the year I couldn't do it anymore it was the year that I quit it was the year that suicidal thoughts began to manifest hear me, not suicidal thoughts in your head but suicidal thoughts begin to manifest it was many times where I would preach but go home cut myself trying to hit the right vein but could never hit it it was many times where I would drive on the road and, 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 and try to drive my car off the road but I could not veer over it was many times oh y'all not gonna like this where I would try to drink myself into a place where I y'all don't want there were many times where I took pills oh, but nobody ever knew it I suffered silently uh, look at somebody say he suffered silently 
Last year, October, was the time where I spent five days. Look at somebody say five days. Uh, five days. Five days. It's something about that number five. I spent five days in the mental institution. I spent five days in Viden Hospital. I spent five days in a cinder block room. Could not, the bed was bolted. Couldn't have pencils. Couldn't have my own clothes. Couldn't have shoelaces in my shoes. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here for five days I sat in a violent hospital and watched her come into the room and try to hold back tears for five days I watched the apostle coming in and out of the room not knowing what to say to me for five days I watched my brother Aaron Jr. come in not knowing what to say because finally this guy that was strong finally this guy that was everything to everybody else can't even be anything to himself this girl right here, wave your hand, Quetta, didn't even know what to say, didn't know what to do. I, I, I was in there five days. I want y'all to hear me. Five days I was in there. Then I came out, thought things were going to get better. But no, Thanksgiving came, Mayor. I was bitter at Thanksgiving. They're all at my family's house celebrating, and I'm at home in the dark crying. And they're begging me, Sherman, please come get out of the bed. I dragged myself to go to Thanksgiving, get a plate, go back to my room, and sat in the dark. Christmas comes. I thought it was going to be better. No, I was bitter during Christmas, upset with God because God, how in the world could I preach, help people, love people, but you let me get to this place? How in the world, God, am I suicidal when I'm helping other people live their life? How? Look at somebody say, how, how, how? Well, I want to show you how God allowed me to get out of that. Because January, I said, no, nah, I can't pastor. I can't preach. Y'all handle it. I'm going to get myself together. That was the year, 2020, when the pandemic came. That was the year that God finally showed me myself. Oh, I feel like running through this place, Trey. That was the year where I stopped trying to be like everybody else. That was the year where I stopped trying to measure. And that was the time where God began to deal with me. And now here we are in Revelation chapter 12. Because John is talking to the church, telling them that the accuser, the enemy, is after you. Uh, he's trying to get you. Uh, look at somebody say, the devil does not like you. I know we're in 2020, but hear me, witchcraft is still real. Curses are still real. People are living under word curses. People are living under all kinds of stuff, trying to figure out why you can't sleep. Why is anxiety at an all-time high? You know why? Because when we were younger, we watched Harry Potter, played with Pokemon, did all kinds of crazy stuff, and now here, in our older age, it's manifesting. We played with stuff and had no idea what we were playing with, but let me tell you something John in Revelation said the enemy is after you and any way he can get to you even if he plants a seed in your childhood and it doesn't manifest until your 20s he got you but let me tell you what John also said in verse 11 he said they overcame and conquered him why because of the blood Oh God, I, I, no, 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 we're not going to dance off of a car. We're not going to jump off of a car. But we are going to praise God because the blood covered us. Oh, I, I, listen, if you can jump for a two-story house, if you can jump for an 800 credit score, if you can jump for debt being wiped out, then surely you should be able to jump because the blood that was shed for you, surely your salvation means more than a car. Your salvation should mean more than a house. Uh, he says this now. He says, he says, we overcame by the blood. Can I tell you something? The only reason I'm here today was because of the blood that was applied over my life. When I tried, listen, when I tried on this arm right here, when I tried this left arm, when I tried, when I tried, when I tried, blood would not come out. And the reason blood would not come out, I have the scars, but I don't have the blood. And the reason why is because the Lord revealed to me. He says, son, why are you trying to penetrate something that's already been shed? His blood covered. Uh, Y'all not talking to me. His blood covered every mistake. His blood covers every fall. I need you to lift your hands and say, I thank God for the blood. Uh, it says they, they overcome uh, D by the blood of the lamb. Jesus, you listen, you have, got, I'm almost finished. You have got to stop penalizing yourself over something that has already been paid for. 
how, listen, how crazy would you look to go back and pay your car payment and go back and they say your car is already paid off and you say, well, that's nice. I'm glad it's paid off, but I'm so used to paying y'all. I want to pay you some more. Listen, if they give you that car, no, if they give you the title to that car, they give you the deed to that house and, and, and you have to pay no more mortgage payments, no more car payments. How crazy would you look calling that finance company and say, listen, I know I got the deed to my house, but I want to make some more payments. No, no, no. It's the same way with the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. When he died on the cross, he already died for your sins. The only thing you have to do is acknowledge and confess which leads us to the next place not only did they overcome by the blood acknowledge me but by the word of their testimony confession which goes back to the beginning of my sermon when they would stand up and say give an honor to God and, and they would begin to confess the good things that the Lord had done for them uh, I want you to just look at somebody as I find my voice and say neighbor please let me testify uh, Pastor B has given his testimony Pastor B has told you how God has brought him out uh, but is there anybody under the sound of my voice uh, that no God is giving you the same testimony uh, you want to wave your hand at me if you got a testimony uh, in the book of John John writes uh, and he says I've written miracles in this book uh, but many other signs and wonders uh, cannot be written in this book uh, well I'm looking at about 25 miracles uh, that if I were to give you the microphone uh, we would not make it out of the year uh, but I want you to tell somebody uh, say neighbor uh, I got a testimony uh, if you only knew what God brought me out of uh, if you only knew how God kept my my no it's not all perfect yes I got some things I still need to work on but the fact of the matter is it could be a whole lot worse than what it is God is on my side so the next time you see Pastor B and say he preach a long time he dance a long time he yells a long time because if you knew my story you would know why I have to pray that I have uh, is there anybody in here uh, that can just testify uh, and say God brought me out uh, and I did not have to uh, pay God one dime uh, didn't have enough money anyway uh, didn't have enough credit on my credit card uh, for what God brought me through uh, I could not get it from a doctor uh, what God brought me through uh, I couldn't get it from a therapist uh, what God brought me through I could not get it from Amazon I could not get it from Walmart but what God brought me through could only come from heaven I need somebody as I get ready to take my seat to look at your neighbor for the second to the last time and say neighbor Oh neighbor, I got a testimony, but I don't have a microphone, so I can't talk about it like I want to, but my praise is a sign God brought me out when the Cowboys score a touchdown, there's a celebration, when LeBron won the championship, there's a celebration, when the Dodgers won the World Series, there was a celebration, Celebration. Surely you won't be louder for a basketball team than you are for God who wins victories over and over. LeBron, as much as I love him, could not bring me out. As much as I love him, could not counsel me out. It was nobody. I said it was nobody but the Lord let me testify when I wanted to quit 
He gave me strength uh, when I threw in the towel. Uh, he threw it back at me uh, when I wanted to go uh, away from North Carolina. God kept me covered. Uh, look at somebody for the very last time and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, oh, our neighbor, I got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. Got a testimony. God brought us out. God brought us out. You are the praiser in this place. You are the praiser in this place. You are the praiser in this place. If God brought you out, you ought to make some noise. If God brought you out, you ought to wave your hand. Let the White House know it's not going to be Trump, not going to be Biden, not going to be Obama, not going to be Martin Luther King, but it's you, it's you. One thing I know, one thing I know is that God will, God will, God will, he'll bring you out, and when he brings you out, it's got to get better. I feel like running. Somebody shout better. Shout better. Shout better. I want to testify. My sleep is better. My mind is better. My body is better. My emotions are better. My speech is better. Shout better. Shout better. If they tell you you are too loud, just respond back and say you don't know what the Lord brought me through. You don't know how the Lord brought me out. You don't know. You don't know. You don't. It won't medication. It was nobody. Aha. It was nobody but the Lord that was on my side. I'm sorry, y'all, but today was a day I remember last year. Today, I'm not supposed to be here. It should have been a casket in Farmville. Apostle should have had on this robe. Y'all should have had on your plaque. They should have been preaching. But here I am. Here I am. Preaching today in my right mind. Still a father to my children. Y'all not talking to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. be ashamed. You hear me? Don't ever be ashamed to talk about what the Lord has done. 
it's, it is him that gives us victory that causes us to triumph but let me tell you something I know there's somebody listening to me now who is right smack in the middle of one of the worst places of your life and you say I don't know how I'm going to overcome it and you heard my testimony and you heard how the Lord has brought me through here was, a, here was a, a part that I really need to share with you is I was going through on the inside, still had my suits on, looked good on the outside. And that's where I want to get to. A lot of you have inside battles that people don't know about. And I call it silent frustration. When you get up, you go to work, you do what you have to do, but you go home and what am I doing? What am, what am I doing? But here's where we rejoice. And here's where we shout because in verse 12 of Revelation chapter 12, it said, yeah, the enemy is here on earth. Look, at, look I know I said that was the last time you're going to talk to your neighbor. I'm trying to limit it, you know, because of everything. Well, just touch yourself and say, yeah, he's at my job. Yeah, he's in my family. You know, he's, he's places that I didn't expect. So yeah, the devil is around. But here's where you rejoice. Because verse 12 says, his time is short. In other words, the reason why, the reason why, I couldn't live the rest of my life suicidal and depressed is because he had a five year span to get me shot his best shots oh that was the nutshell version oh if I had time to tell you some of the shots he took at me oh if I had time to tell you but I don't but the good thing is, his time is up. Oh, y'all, can I say that one more time? The good thing is, his time is up. Whatever he was going to try, he should have tried it then. And whatever he tried, it didn't work. Which means we're alive for a reason. Luke chapter 4. When Jesus was in the wilderness and tempted by the, the devil. There's some translations that say. After a while. The devil time expired. And he left him for a season. Can I prophesy to this church. Those watching every visitor here. Can I just prophesy and you, you guys just go crazy and praise God. That's this. Welcome to your devil-free season. Welcome to your devil-free season. I said, welcome to your devil-free season. And it, hallelujah, it's no accident. It's no accident that the Lord had us here celebrating in daylight savings time. The other thing I want you to praise God for and encourage yourself is I hear the Lord saying he's giving you some time back. Some time where you thought you, man, I didn't get my 20s right, didn't get my 30s right, didn't get my 40s right, didn't get my 50s right. Now here you are in your 60s, here you are thinking it's too late. The Lord said, no, it's not too late. The devil's time has expired. And what the canker worm stole, what the caterpillar stole, what they ate up, the Lord said, I'm getting ready to restore. Hallelujah. And after you've suffered a while. Glory to his name. You hear what I said? After you have suffered a while. The Lord does not intend. So let me testify. Let me tell you what the Lord has brought me out of. But then there's another part of my testimony. Let me tell you where the Lord is taking me to. 
I told y'all to make an announcement to your future. I'm on the way. Let me tell you where the Lord is taking me to. You're going to be in positions, Mary. We're going to be in positions where the Lord, well, we're not even going to have to check our credit score. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, no, no, no. Not because we know it's good. Some of us are already in that place where we, got, we know if we go and reply, we get it. But let me tell you, well, we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go because we're not even going to need credit. We're going to pay cash on it. No, I don't need no payments for this. I'm going to just lay it down. Here you go. Give me what I want. Well, sir, it's not on the lot. Go find it. So the house hasn't built yet, been built yet. Well, build it. Here you go. I've got a church full of millennials who still need their parents to co sign. Somebody shout, those days are over. A lot of you are in a position where you're tired of taking from your parents. You're ready to give back to them. Oh, I would, oh where y'all at? I know I'm not the only one. I want y'all to hear me and hear me well. Start talking about the goodness of the Lord. And not focusing on the bad things that has happened. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I would rather, listen, I would rather dance about it than cry about it any day. In A flat, this is what I'm going to do. And we're getting ready to go. And uh, our mayor was so generous to hang with us today. But I know he got some other things to do and football to watch and all that good stuff. And we want him to come back and say, them people held me hostage. But this is what I want to do. How many of you are thankful and got a testimony? And how many of you are not ashamed? To let anybody know this was God that brought me out. How many of you are like Paul that said, I've learned to be content whether I have it or whether I don't? I'm gonna give you about 45 seconds. We got your good clothes on today, but listen, I don't ever wear anything that I can't praise God in. I don't care if it's a $400, $500 pair of shoes or what? I don't, or $20 pair of shoes. I don't wear anything. Nothing that I can't give God praise in. Hallelujah. I want you just to take about 45 seconds. And some of us, some of us have to feel something, you know, like, ooh, and shake and all that. No, 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 no. Don't feel nothing. Just think about what he brought you through. Just think about how he brought you out. Somebody's already thinking about it. On the count of three, just take about 45 seconds and praise them. One, two, one, two, three. Come on. I took 
a um, psychology class, and I'ma sit down. And when I was in college, taking psychology, the first thing that it told us is, there are different types of communication. Only about 10% of human communication is verbal. The rest of it is physical. Body posture, all that good stuff. Well, I got the mic, so y'all can't be as verbal as you would like to. But there's 90% of you, the rest of you, that can move your feet and say what I can't talk about because I might get fired or I might get in trouble. Because there's some things you're going to have to take to the grave. What I can't talk about, I can dance about it. I can dance about it. I can dance about it. Go ahead and dance about what you can't talk about. There's just some things you don't need to know. But just know God brought me out. Dancing. I remember when she was on a walker. God has been good to us. He's been good. He's been good to us. Why are they dancing? Why they going crazy? Because he's been good. I don't know no other way to be. When somebody is good, you tell them thank you. Thank you. Let my feet testify. Let my hands testify. He's been good. got this last declaration just touch yourself and say it won't be long touch yourself and say it won't be long won't be long won't be long won't be long it won't be long won't be long won't be long won't be long it won't be long. Won't be long. Won't be long. Won't be long. Before God makes a way. Won't be long. Won't be long. Won't be long. Before He heals your body.
All right. We got to go.
what I'm going to do. Y'all stay right there. Just bring it down a little bit. I want everybody to stand. We're getting ready to go. And uh, I'm going to pray. I'm going to dismiss. And then if y'all, whatever y'all do after that. Hallelujah. Where's Maya? Uh, uh, Mildred. Where's she at? Tell her. This, when people ask, you know, why y'all do all this? Because every time we praise, we get results. See, wave your hand, T. Hi. She was hit with a stroke, couldn't move, and the Lord healed her in this church. Right here. People look at the little baby and say, well, she don't know what she's doing, why she come up here and dance and all that. Well, she was in a car accident. Yeah. How long ago? Two, two weeks, months, two, two months ago. And was on a walker. Yeah. Little baby couldn't, couldn't walk. And it was a Sunday we prayed for her. And she got up on the walker and started dancing. Now look at her now. With no walker. Look at somebody say, praise works. Praise works. And it's my testimony. So I want to pray for those of you. And then when I'm going to dismiss you. Father, my prayer is from this sermon and this celebration. That individuals who are going through will be encouraged. That problems, trials, and troubles are just a part of life. But your provision is also a part of life. God, as you've allowed me to testify about what you brought me through and over, my prayer is that the ears that are listening will receive it for themselves. And they'll have a testimony that you brought them out as well. God, we have a word. We overcame because of the blood and because of our testimony. And most importantly, we have a word that the devil has a short time. And we decree and declare today, his time is up. So we thank you for everyone in this house. Protect us as we leave from this place. Cover us with the blood. Bring us back at the appointed time. Keep us safe from all hurt, harm, danger, seen and unseen, accidents, speeding tickets, mechanical failures, hydroplaning. We give your name all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you at 5 o'clock if you're registered. We'll see you at 5 o'clock. Now, if y'all want to praise or whatever, now y'all can do what you need to do. God bless you.